Hello everybody, a very warm welcome back to the Mectech Garage. Project Plonker continues. We have got to carry on with the paintwork inside the van. You would have seen in the last video if you watched it, we got it all in primer and fill out and everything else. And then it had to be refilled again because I wasn't happy with the finish and this, that and the other. So we're going to carry on with that. Hopefully we'll get that finished in this video. And then obviously we'll carry on to the next jobs if we have time. Let's crack on, get some work done. Right, as you would have just seen in the time lapse, I've re-rubbed down the side panels. I've used some uh, dolphin glaze, which I mentioned in the previous video on them. I'm just looking for where that is so I can show you the packet. Don't know where I put it. There it is. This is the stuff I've used. Dolphin glaze by Dupol. It's like a very, very fine filler, ultra fine glazing filler. I've gone over all the areas I could see with that and now we're going to refill a primer again and obviously if there's any more areas I need to do I'll go over it again until I get it how I want it basically. It's a bit of a lengthy process but hopefully it'll be worth it in the end and it'll look really really good and hopefully pretty flawless with any luck. Let's get some uh, filler primer back on. I'm going to do two coats this time, get it a bit thicker and hopefully that should see us good for getting the top coat on.
tidy ho with the uh, primer now re-primed again after a couple of different coats of filler and whatever else it's now got two coats of filler primer on there I'm actually going to go over it with foam block and some wet and dry and we're going to get it all as smooth as we possibly can and hopefully then it should be good enough fingers crossed to get some colour on there so let's get this rubbed down and uh, then we can hopefully uh, get it looking absolutely marvellous Right, as you would have just seen, that is all rubbed down now with, I actually used 2000 grit wet and dry, which is really, really fine, but it's all I had in the garage. So that is now mega smooth. Now I'm not gonna say it's absolutely flawless. It's not, but it's a damn sight better than it was before. A few of you might be thinking, why didn't you use a guide coat on it when you rubbed it down? Well, as you know, Reliance are fiberglass and there's not a straight panel on this van. <laughs> so to try and block that straight and with a guide coat would be nigh on impossible so I didn't even consider trying it I think I'd have been foolish to try and get it any straighter I've got it as straight as I can within reason and remember as well they are inner panels and they're probably going to get a few knocks and marks and bangs and on this side the spare wheel sits in that massive gap so that covers all that up and obviously then the seat goes there that covers up some of it as well so it's going to be quite a bit of it covered almost but I've got it to the standard I think it is acceptable. I've just got the heater in there at the moment, drying it out. I have wiped it over with some brake clean, um, as I've just said, I think. Um, so I'm just gonna let this dry out for a minute, let it all make sure there's no moisture left anywhere, and then we can get some uh, color on. Top banana. base coat now on we're going to be using some of this which is the Pro XL 2k clear in a can now it's got a little cap on the bottom there which you pop off there's a ring a little metal ring in the side there that you take out and then you thread the ring onto this little pole on the bottom there and you pull it and twist and that releases a hardener into the lacquer obviously you shake it all up and it gives you a 2k lacquer in a can now needless to say because this has got a hardener in it it is mega mega smelly now not, i've had a mask on doing the base coat as you would have seen anyway but with this stuff if you don't use a mask you could die so don't use don't use it without using having a mask on because that is mega toxic right i'm gonna get it set up inside and we'll get some lacquer on this I went around the inside of here a few places over the corners there. Um, there was a couple, I went over it with my, my bright torch and just to make sure there was no primer showing through and there was a couple little bits around the edges on those back corners up here um, where it's obviously quite tight. Um, so I've redone those, it's all covered now, which is a bit of luck because I've just run out of paint. One can was just enough to do two and a half coats of that basically. And I've got the same size can again for the lacquer 
but the lacquer usually does go a little bit further. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a dust coat of lacquer first of all, fairly thin coat. That will let that obviously get it um, adhered to the base coat. Leave it for about five minutes, and then I usually go over it with a, a more of a heavier coat, medium to heavy coat, because with this stuff, I found if I leave it too long, it does react, and then you basically get to start again. So try and get it all done sort of fairly quickly if that makes sense so let me get set up in the van I may spray this on uh, live just so you can see it rather than me just time lapsing it all right I've got to be really careful I don't uh, touch the sides when I'm doing either side now I'm going to obviously do this um, ring pull bit first before I put the mask on let me turn that, um, turn that heater off for a minute just so you can hear me a bit better. So yeah, you just basically thread that on so it's got a little hole in the end of it. You pull it out, just hoping I've done this right. You pull it out like that, give it a twist. Doesn't matter how many times it just twists around, let's all just harden it out. Go in and out a few times just to make sure that it's all been let out like that. That releases a little capsule in there and obviously you really need to give it a real good shake now this stuff obviously where it's 2k once it's been re um, released into the can it doesn't last that long in the can you might have a couple of days on the shelf with it but obviously i'm going to use a fair bit of it doing this so i ain't too worried about that i just want it to match the dash that's the main thing and get it looking something like the dash so it all ties in nice that's what I'm going for. I'm sorry if the camera's shaking. It is sitting on the van, obviously, as I'm shaking this, so. Give that a good old shake. I don't know how long for, probably, it probably tells you on here. Two minutes. I ain't doing it two minutes. My arm be falling off. <laughs> and it says on here as well, uh, apply in cross coats from a distance of 250 mil from the object. Uh, drying time 30 to 60 minutes infrared compatible can be mechanically polished after 24 hours after use turn aerosol upside down and spray and empty the uh, trigger the valve whatever you want to call it just so you can keep using it if you need to after you've done one coat or whatever so it doesn't get clogged up in the nozzle alright I'm going to go with that I think I'm going to be all day this has got a, a fan adjustment on this as well. I'm going to go fairly big on the fan because obviously I want to get a good coverage on it. Right, you might not be able to hear me very well with this on. <laughs> but we will try. So as I say, dust coat first. So we'll do that, let that go off for five minutes, then we'll come back and do the, the main coat. Try and get my mask on. Come on. All right. So it's got quite a big fan on this, so hopefully it should cover quite nice. Right, I'm not going to go too mad, that is enough for now. Oh, I can smell it through the mouth. Thank you. 
Right, I'm going to leave that, hopefully you can hear me, I'm going to leave that for about five minutes. I'll come back to you, we'll do one more heavier coat, and that'll be it. Right, hopefully you can hear me, this is the second and final coat now, let's get it done. This stuff absolutely stinks. It's done a bit funny here actually. This side's alright. This side's got a bit milky in places, I don't know why. Hmm. Not very happy about that. I wonder whether it'll dry out a bit. Sometimes Best to just leave it, I guess. I don't know why it's gone patchy like that. It was fine a minute ago. It might dry out a bit. I'm hoping it will, but. Apart from that bit, it's come out really well. This side perfect. 
has it done like that? I'm hoping it, really hoping it dries and it comes out. Only time will tell, I guess. I think I'm going to leave it because if I keep going, I'm going to ruin it. There we go, right, let's leave it alone. Right, it is the next morning. Well, I will say morning in a loose term, it's the next day. <laughs> and this is all dry. Now, it's a bit dry, I didn't notice that actually, it's a bit dry on top of there. Um, we may be able to flatten polish it to get it this this side the side itself actually most of it's fine and only that little bit on top of there that's dry I don't know why same with this side a little bit dry on the top there but it is what it is I think I think it's gonna have to be that because I don't think I'm gonna get it any better than that not out of a spray can anyway um, and as I said before, it is an inner panel, so it's not got to be absolutely spot on. It's good enough. But let's get, hold me, let's get this unmasked. Mm, load of water under there, that's not good, is it? Get all this unmasked and see what it looks like against the, uh, the black on the top. Hopefully. Look all right. Oh, look at that. That's pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that. As I say, shame that's a little bit dry on the top there, but as I say, I might be able to flatten polish that to make it smoother. Um, I think that will be okay. It's because it's on a flat, and when you try and spray the can upright, it doesn't spray out as nice, if that makes sense. That's the excuse I'm using. Considering that was shot at, it's not dead straight, you can see it's got little waves in it, but as I said, the fiberglass is not that strong. So, considering that had been shot at and that had holes in that, I'm pleased with that really, it's not too bad. Let's have a look at this side. need a little bit of touching up here and there because of the black got uh, rubbed on when I'm doing the filler work but other than that I think it looks all right and what I'm thinking I'm going to do as well is I'm actually going to run a bead of black sealer along here not only to seal up between this channel and the inner to make it um, obviously a bit more soundproofed and airtight and all the rest of it but also to give it a nice edge to finish on. There we go. That is not bad, not bad. I'm fairly pleased with that, fairly pleased. A little bit of dryness there, unfortunately, where that tape was sticking out, and I didn't get around the back of it very well. I'm not actually sure what goes in that hole there. Masking tape out now as well. Like that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Right, well, I couldn't resist. I had to try it. I had to try and I, had to, I was but just bugging me. I had to try and flat it. So let's. I have to give this little go over, I've just given it a little, give it a little bit of a flat. 
I've risked, risked it for a biscuit, as they say. Let's see if I can get that as smooth as it should be. Right, that is flatted down. Now, before I get the polisher going, I need a rag. Just grab a rag, microfiber. That one there will do. Let's uh, get a bit of compound on this, see what it comes up like. I reckon it's going to be all right. <laughs> Famous last words. This is a good thing about this 2K paint. It's uh, you can flat and polish it nice. You'll be able to hear this on video because you could hear how rough it was when I rubbed my hand over it before. And the rest of it felt smooth. Now, let's just give it a buff over. That's not too bad. It's not quite as glossy as a, well, I say it's not quite as glossy. Yeah, it's not quite as glossy as the rest of it. It is smooth now though. I don't say I'm rough anymore. Maybe I didn't get quite enough lacquer on there. It's a shame. I wonder if I can go a little bit more. All right. We're going to regret this, but still, we'll have a go. Remember, this is really, really fine. 2000 grit, wet and dry. And it is wet as well, which obviously reduces its... Um, whatever the word is severeness there you go so it reduces its severeness of how much it takes off the top layer you know don't think I want to go any more than that really See what it comes up like. It's getting better every time. I don't want to go too much because as I say, I don't know how much lacquer I've actually got on there, but that's pretty smooth now. Still not as smooth as that, but it isn't bad. It's not rough anymore like it was before. That's the main thing. I don't want to go too much more because I think if I go too much more, I'm going to end up going through and I don't want to do that. So we'll have to leave that as it is, I think. But at least it's improved. It's, it's, I'm, it's so infuriating because I know full well if I polish this up, it's going to come up like glass because there's enough lacquer on it to take it back. And there's not quite enough on the top there to do that. And I don't want to paint it lacquer again because I said to you before, 
I've had it in the past where I've relacquered that lacquer. Like if I did it now, for example, it would react. Whatever reason in that can, it reacts. Um, if you don't do it and get it on there straight away, if you do it again, it will all go wrong. So I think that is going to be what it's going to be. Maybe I'm maybe I'm going for too much perfection, but just like it to be the best it can be. That's all. And unfortunately, looks like that's it. Is the best it's going to be. I'm going to give it a little bit of more of a polish. was the uh, the risk gone through not enough color on there either so the lacquer's not thick enough and the, and the uh, starting to show a little bit of yellow through there last should have left it alone oh well, it looks like I might be redoing this side again Rest of it looks really good. Radio, as you would have just seen, I've given the but these both side panels a flat and polish. Um, really, really pleased with this side, the driver's side. Nothing wrong with that at all. This side, as as I said, I've I've polished through, which I'll show you in a second. And there's a little mark there, but that is going to be behind the spare wheel, so I ain't worried about that. Um, Mrs. Mectex behind the camera, and I've just had a little bit of a conflag with her about it and it was an idea that I'd sort of thought about but hadn't obviously spoken to anyone about because she just came in the garage and she agreed with me and that is well, in fact she suggested it before I said it as well so um, that is to make because obviously where the rear chair um, is in here these sections are going to be effectively armrests for whoever's sitting in the back anyway so what we're thinking is so I haven't got to repaint it all again. And it is really minor. I mean, you probably wouldn't even notice it if I didn't point it out. But anyway, what we're thinking maybe is making a couple of little padded armrests to go on here. Now, I'm not going to do it full length on this side. I'll only do it the same length as what this one is because obviously this one's got the cut out for the spare wheel. So to make a padded armrest to go on there, both sides. So when the rear chairs are up and the kids are sitting in the back, they uh, have got something padded to lean on. Also, it means that they won't attack with the paintwork with their sleeves and buttons and all the rest of it so that is what i'm thinking mrs mectic would you mind passing me the camera and i can show everyone thank you what's going on right i don't know if you can about to see this on camera let's zoom you out you didn't zoom me out <laughs> it's all right you can talk you know don't want to be on video um right i don't know if you can see it but you can just about see 
there there is a very very slight little bit of yellow primer showing through now it's very minor very minor and now i've flattened this back although it doesn't sound as smooth as the lacquer because obviously there's not a lot of lacquer on there which is why i polish through um it is smooth now so as you can see i've polished all this other stuff up it all looks really really good i'm really pleased with it. there's a little mark there which as i said i'm not worried about because that's going to be beyond the spear wheel anyway so i think we're going to run with it we're going to leave it as that because otherwise i'm going to spend forever and a day rubbing these back again or well, that side anyway flattening it and painting it but i'm pretty pleased with the finish on that that's not too bad um this side's lovely and smooth there's nothing wrong with this side at all. Got enough lacquer on this side to be able to flat it back and get it nice and smooth, whereas the other side wasn't quite enough. So yeah, that I think is going to be the plan. I'm hoping now to get onto the fit test fit in the doors. Whether I get it done in this video or not remains to be seen because I'm already a day late with this video and I'm obviously trying to get it out for you guys. Christmas is coming, there's lots to do, so let's crack on. I'll either see you in a minute fitting some doors or not. <laughs> Right then, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there in this video. I have run out of time. It is the day before Christmas Eve. I'm a late, day late getting this video out and I need to go and help Mrs. Mectek with Christmas stuff and all that sort of thing. So I cannot spend any more time out in the garage. Otherwise, I might not be here for Christmas. So <laughs> there we go. We've got the paintwork done. I know there's that little defect where it polished through very slightly on the passenger side. I'm a bit miffed about that if I'm honest, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. And as I said, we may make some little armrests up to go on there, either that or if you don't notice it once. Now the light's not on in there, and obviously there's no direct light onto it, you barely see it. So, you know, I know it's there. Will other people notice it? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Tell me what you think I should do. Should I repaint it all? Should I make a couple of little armrests up? Should I just leave it or, or whatever? So there we go, at least we've got the inside paintwork of the van pretty much complete now apart from just painting that rear floor in there obviously with a little bit of a finer stone chip just so that it's got something to sort of load stuff in and it's not going to all get scratched and everything else and it will look half decent really luck so that is the plan for that bit but that will be obviously in a future video um if you do like projects like this the lotus all the others as you would have seen in previous videos there's quite a few videos on there now make sure you do those four things for me like subscribe share and hit that notification bell it's all free, it costs you absolutely nothing, and it really, really helps me out on the channel, so I really do appreciate it. Remember, I've got Instagram, mech underscore tech, 1985, and I have got Facebook, mech dash tech, for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to. All that's left me to say is, have a very Merry Christmas. I don't know whether there'll be a video in between Christmas and New Year, but I am planning on doing a full fleet update, um, hopefully in the next video, which will go through every single car on the fleet, tell you exactly what is going on with them, and there is some big news coming as well. So I'm not going to go into it any more than that. As I say, have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if I don't see you before. And if you want to join me soon for more automotive ventures, make sure you tune in again next time. Cheers, guys.